Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a test and review of the Watt Cycle 12.8 volt 100 amp hour trolling motor edition battery. But where's the battery? It's not there. Not there. But it's right there. The one with the strap on it. In service for over a month in parallel with three other watt cycles. So this will be an interesting uh, pull down capacity test. It's been cycled for roughly a month on the 12 volt system right here. And you see almost full, so it won't take me long to top it off. So let me go ahead and disconnect it from the rest of the system and I'll pull the battery out and we'll start. So there is the group 24 size format, watt cycle trolling motor edition battery, smart edition with Bluetooth. They got their own Bluetooth app and stuff to use if you're interested in that kind of thing. You can see it's it's used, but it's not been abused. Uh, 9 15 2024 is the date the wires were connected to that battery right there. You can see there it is, it's out of its cubby hole from the rest. So, um, let me show you one thing before I start. I had a lot of questions from my last watt cycle video. If you didn't see that, I'll put a link in the description too, so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of viewers want me to check the terminal voltage on the trolling motor edition battery. So, as you as you saw right there, we're at 13.4 on the system and then the watt cycle trolling motor battery is at 13.42 at rest. I haven't connected a charge or anything to it, so it is at system voltage. So I've got some leads on the watt cycle to top it off and viewer requested, you requested that I charge it with a commercially available charger. Uh, the rest of the way, instead of on solar or the power supply, so I'm using my Noifavo uh, 25 amp charger and you can see we're already well above 80%, so it won't take it just a minute to top this battery off. So y'all want me to test it with a commercial charger, so I'm going to let the commercial charger do what it does, and uh, I won't put a PSU on or nothing to start with, and we'll see what happens. Just another couple of minutes, and it'll be full, and we'll begin the capacity test. I lost the manual. Uh, it comes with a nice manual, but I misplaced it. Uh, so like I said, it's been a while since I installed this battery, so I apologize for not having the manual. I will include a slide in a minute, but let me hit the high points with it. It's low temp charge protected, supposedly. Group 24 size format, uh, 23 pounds, so by industry standard weight. Grade A cell, supposedly, 120 amp BMS. It is IP67 waterproof. Uh, so for fishing applications, as it's designed for, you know, it should serve you well. And they're rating it at between five to 15,000 cycles, depending on your daily depth of discharge. So, you know, it's supposed to be a pretty good battery. Charger is about to shut off on the watt cycle battery. Any moment now, there it went. And we're at 13.46 volts on the battery after coming off the Noifavo charger. And one more shot of the resting voltage before I connect it to anything, to the Alpha Inverter test rig. 13.42 volts after coming off the charger. All right, um, to the commenters from my other watt cycle video, I see exactly what you're talking about now. And Toby at Toby's Real Life Skills, uh, same thing you were seeing, 13.13 volts uh, with just power to the inverter. The inverter, inverter is not even on yet. Let me turn the inverter on and see if it drops even more. Okay, that's the first time I've ever seen that. Exactly the same thing that uh, Toby saw. So odd that the battery drops to 13.0 volts. Uh, I don't know what to make of that. I've not seen that happen. Inverter back off. Let me hit the breaker on the inverter right there. Okay, 13.36. Remember it was at 13.4 and change and just turn the inverter on caused the voltage to drop that low. Hmm, all right, I'm about to do this a little different today. Now I thought the rest and voltage was a smidge low on this battery to start off with. I didn't know if it's the Noifavo or not. So I hooked the Noifavo up to a different battery let it finish topping off right here. You can see the leads are right here. This battery's at rest. See its resting voltage? It's at 13.8, uh, where the watt cycle was 13.4 and change. So, um, hmm. Okay, and then back on the watt cycle. Remember, no energy's moved through this battery yet. 13.35. Let me try one more thing. Put the power supply on it. Um, Power supply didn't put any current into it. It blipped for one second and jumped it up to 14.57 on the battery. And uh, let me turn the PSU off right there. Okay, now I'm getting the 13 volts even with nothing on it like other people are getting. Let me show you that again. Okay, this is, look at that. This is the oddest behaving 
uh, battery that I've seen. Never had this happen before. Turn it back off, drops down to 13 volts flat, just like viewers have said that theirs are doing. Uh, all right, I'm gonna crack it open to start with and check these cells, see if we got a flyer, a high cell or low cell, something like that going on. Check the BMS on this thing, cause that is odd. And honestly, I haven't known, known about this or didn't pay attention to this system or just didn't see it because maybe it's other batteries were, were helping it along. Uh, these don't do that right here. These don't act like that. All right, so the battery's still intact. Um, I'm going to crack it open and check the cells, see what the voltage of each cell is, uh, just to see if that's what's causing this thing to act crazy. So, uh, you know, there it is intact. If I don't find nothing crazy going inside, if I see a solution, I'll pull down to a capacity run on it. But I just, that's odd. I gotta see what's going on with this thing. And before I tear it apart, here's a reference to the model number and serial number in case Watt Cycle watches this video and wants to reference a batch, a production batch of that battery right there. All right, let's see what's going on with this Watt Cycle right here. That's kind of odd. The voltage is acting crazy like that. So, uh, let me get it flipped around here. We'll take us a look and see what in the world is going on here. I got big old huge wires in it. That's pretty cool to see. Uh, but having a voltage drop like that, that's not cool to see. So I'm wondering if it's something in this BMS right here. Everything's super tight. Nothing loose on the BMS by any means. I got uh, torque indicators right here that somebody checked everything. Uh, like I said, everything's tight. Super tight in this one right there. Uh, metal case right there, so hopefully I can just slide it right out. Oh yeah, I'll be able to slide it right out of the uh, the plastic. All right, so before I pull it the rest of the way out of the case, these are our power leads right here coming out of the BMS to the terminal. These are our battery leads. So I want to check the voltage. The positive lead goes straight to the cell pack. So let me check right here. All right, we got, look at that, 13.58 on the actual cell pack itself. That's what I would I would expect and what I would normally see even on the top terminals like we was working with a minute ago. See that right there? Let's look at that again. 13.58. Completely normal. Exactly what I expect. All right, so that's the battery leads going right down to the negative on the actual cell pack. Okay, here is the power side of the BMS where the power is regulated out, where it's controlled. So let's check right here. 13.3. So we have a voltage differential across this BMS somehow. We're losing, somehow we're losing... Our voltage, our power, see 13.58 on that side, 13.31 there. I've never seen that before. That is a first for me. So do we have some kind of resistor or regulator in this BMS, something new that I've not seen before? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that for you. I'm going to show you something else on this pack. Here's the watt cycle cell pack, you know, nice metal case, like always. I think that's their own BMS, but I was alluding to one of the viewers, uh, that was asking me questions and I told him I thought the the cells might not be balanced in these watt cycles is why you see it hit you know 14 6 one hits a cell vo over voltage and the rest of the pack does not come up so this might be what's going on let me just uh let me show you what I'm I'm just diagnosing it looking over everything showing you what I'm finding I mean that's what we're doing right here today so here is one cell let me move my my paws right there so you can see it Okay, this cell is at 3.42 volts, okay? Go to the next cell right here, 3.39, okay? This one, 3.37, okay? And then down here, let me get a, get a good connection I'm on that glue, 3.375, so let's see again, 3.376, 3.371, three nine and then 3.42 so this pack is all all out of balance uh it's not balancing so i don't know if the balancer is having an issue on this bms or what's going on but that pack is probably the widest out of range i've seen on any of these batteries but that still does not explain you know right here i'm getting 13.57 you know off off of the actual pack you know this stuff positive and negative off the pack right there 13.57 and then we go on the other side of the bms i mean why are we dropping down you know quarter of a volt or whatever all right let me show you an example of a battery what do you see 99.9999% of the time how bms's work 
you usually don't have any voltage difference between your cell pack and your output voltage. So I got the repower flow because we can look at it pretty easy. Um, so there we go. Our output voltage on the repower flow is 13.36 volts. Okay. So now I'm going to go straight to the cell pack. This is pre BMS. We should have very close to the same voltage. 13.36 exactly the same voltage at the summation of the series of the cells and same thing at the output of the bms there's no voltage differential that's how they're supposed to work and say so i got the power supply turned all the way up and nothing's going into this battery then the cell pack's at 13.57 but if i check down here right there look at that 14.67 same you know, close to the power supply right there going into the bms it won't let anything else into the cells even though the cells could could take a smidge more right there so just showing you everything i'm finding so i even turned the power supply unit down just to make sure you know there's not some kind of something new on this bms that i'm unaware of as far as its control you know algorithm or whatever that's built into it see right there going into the bms coming out of the bms 13.57 so this is a weird acting bms compared to what i'm used to seeing it looks like a one-off uh bms for them it's not a jbd or nothing like that um so the cells either aren't balancing or weren't matched very well that's pretty pretty widespread between the cells i don't like seeing that and so you direct directly connected to the cells bypassing the bms you know i can i can squeeze some more in there don't try this at home see i can squeeze squeeze a little more in there to stop with this power supply i was trying to see what it would do but this first cell right here is almost at 3.6 and then right here we're at 3.5 and then 3.4 and uh 3.45 so all out of whack worst i've ever seen as far as balancing between the cells uh i'm gonna let this one get to 3.65 I got to stop it manually, remember, because the BMS. So, yeah, I got to stop it right there. All right, stopped. Okay, let it rest for a minute and see what it is now. All right, so it's settled for a few minutes, so let's check and see what it does now. Remember, I had this cell right at almost 3.65, and all these were lagging by quite a bit. So I'm going to check at the cell pack level right here. All right, we're at 13.83 on the actual pack pre-BMS. Then I'll go to the power lead of the BMS right here 13.56 looking you know looking a little better right there manually charging the pack this is the first time i've charged this battery at a higher c rate it's part of a larger bank its entire life so i've not seen this behavior yet until i punched it with that 25 amp charger so that brought the cells up really quick and didn't didn't let them you know kind of self equalize to its balancer or whatever and brought this up as a flyer a high cell so let's check it i had it at th almost 3.65 so we'll see what it's doing is it 3.52 three all right this one is at 3.461 and this one 3.40 okay see we're 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 dropping down and then this one right here 3.41 so you know just just all out of whack so that's probably why those voltages and stuff are are acting up the way they are um i guess i can try to to drain it down and all that but I mean, do I really want to do that with uh, with a pack that's that far out of whack? What I'm probably going to do is is manually uh, balance those cells and then try again later, I guess, because I was going to give you a capacity run on it, but <clears throat> I can't give you a reliable capacity run if I've got cells that are they're that far out of whack. So uh, I'm going to sit here and troubleshoot this some more and uh, go through it a little bit more and see what the manufacturer wants to say but just giving you an update to what i'm finding right now but you know the pack looks good it's well constructed things like that um let me try one more thing though before we wrap this up i'm gonna try one thing i'm gonna try to trip the bms's fets through a safety let everything open up and shut off and see if the voltage changes so i'm gonna hit this high temp sensor right here just real quick and uh, see if you know tripping the bms on a safety will change our our output voltage. So let's see what happens. Okay, I triggered the safety on the BMS. You can see the voltage has dropped out. Look at that. Went up and then come right back down. So I went up to 13.7, dropped down to 13.52. I hope you saw that. So uh, something 
something in this BMS. I don't like this BMS on this battery. I don't like what's going on with this thing. And let me show you one more time on the pack. Now it was 13.5 on the output. And you've seen it spike to 13.7. So I need to pull this thing apart a little further and investigate the circuitry on that BMS. That'll be another video. See, 13.79 and you saw that spike when it come back from its high temp protection, it spiked up. So there's, I think there's some kind of resistor in this BMS causing this uh, output voltage to be regulated. So like I said, I gotta investigate that further. I don't wanna take any more of your time, but uh, until I figure out what's going on with this, I mean, you're, you know, you see what I'm, what I'm seeing um, for now. I don't know if I can recommend this battery yet until I find out what is going on. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll investigate it further and give you an update. Uh, you know, as soon as I possibly can. So thank y'all for watching today. Y'all have a nice day and be safe.